why are we talking about electricity in terms of healing the body? How come we're not? How come we're not talking? I'm gonna trade you there. There we go. Oh, that's a little bit better. How come we're not talking about standard allopathic medicine? How come we're not talking about chemicals? Um, and I think when we look at the history of where medicine came from, how it was started, um, and the general understanding of why we use it, uh, the Hippocratic Oath says, you know, first do no harm. And that was from uh, Hippocrates, uh, Greek dude, a lot of Greek dudes. Um, but uh, he said, let thy food be thy medicine and thy medicine be thy food. Um, what you put in your body fuels you. And uh, we know that chemicals, we are, we are chemicals, but chemicals don't know what to do by themselves. They're not self-intelligent. They don't know where to go, how to break down without an electrical stimuli from the brain, from the nervous system. Um, and everything we know now, everything has electricity in it, from the carpet to the sun rays to the air to uh, us, our clothes, the tables, dogs, cats, absolutely everything, the universe, the sky, everything is made of electricity and frequency. And we have some fathers of uh, electromedicine and of uh, frequency that have proved these things. Everyone has heard of Nikola Tesla. Uh, everyone's heard of Albert Einstein. Um, there are a couple other ones that are not as well known, but just as valid. Um, you have Royal Roymond Reif with the Reif machine in the 1930s. Uh, in 1936, he proved that he could cure virtually every disease known to man. And uh, nobody cared. There was, there was no money in it. Uh, if you got rid of the problem, you didn't have money coming in and uh, couldn't make a lucrative, lucrative business model out of it. Uh, you also have Reinhardt Voll, and uh, the list goes on and on of, of the, the grandfathers and fathers of electromedicine. Um, and that's just 100 years ago, uh, not very long. But if we look back at, say, ancient cultures, the uh, ancient Mesopotamians, the first recorded human civilization on the planet 10,000 years ago, and this is debatable now, of course, but uh, in terms of time frame, but 10,000 years ago, uh, the, the doctors of that time were known as magicians, and they would bring people down to the Nile River, and they would make these shallow banks, they would build up sand, sand banks, and uh, they would corral this type of fish known as a torpedo fish, and it's in the family of the stingray, kind of looks like a stingray, but it doesn't have the barb at the tail, and the fins of this fish emit a very small electrical charge. And so they would stock these waters with these fish, and then they'd have people wade into the waters uh, and then stand on the fins of these fish. And their arthritis, their gout, their knee pain, their back pain, their cuts, their bruises would all just go away. And they'd just come back day after day until it was completely gone. And that small amount of electricity put into the cells helped them regulate the chemicals that we have inside of us. But again, the chemicals don't know what to do unless you have the correct amount of electricity. And this was Brandon's issue as well. He was putting all, you saw all the pills and all the supplements and everything. Well, that's all good and well, but if you don't have the electrical conductance in your cells to break that stuff down and put it in the correct area, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. We call it expensive urine. And you end up flushing it all out of your body, your kidneys can't break it down and absorb it, liver can't absorb it, so on and so forth. Um, so we see these things from the beginning of human civilization all the way through till nowadays and the modern 21st century, 20th century, uh, and in terms of these types of technologies. We've got pulsed electromagnetic field over here, PEMF, very, very popular today. Um, seen for uh, uh, many years and uh, lots of conventions across the planet and they're featuring hundreds of these types of machines. They're, they're very prevalent. Uh, we've got red light therapy, um, extremely beneficial for the body. Um, more and more advancements are being made in these fields every day. Um, 
We have, of course, things like the TENS device and the uh, muscle stimulator. We've got the EKG, the EEG, the EMG, all the things that electrically diagnose our body. Uh, we also have the defibrillator, which just about everybody knows. If you're on the operating table and your heart stops, they'll give you some adrenaline. And if the adrenaline doesn't work, the very last resort is the defibrillator, a massive jolt of electricity through your body to start your heart again. It's because we're made of the electricity. Um, one of the better quotes, uh, lots of quotes from these guys, but from uh, Einstein is, everything is frequency. That's all there is to it. Match the vibration of the reality that you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. And is, is absolutely right. I, um, Nikola Tesla said, if you want to understand the secrets of the universe, think in terms of frequency, vibration, and energy. Um, uh, and so this is something that we've known for a long time. Uh, and now today with these new technologies, we've kind of capitalized on it. And we figured out how the human body works and are now able to exploit uh, the, these certain processes that we thought forever were um, kind of unob unobtainable. And so uh, that brings us to what we do at Halo Health. And we've taken through our road and through our journey and our learning all of the best of the best and thrown them together and seen what we can't do with it. And we, we really haven't found what we can't do yet. And so we're still searching, which is, which is a good feeling. It's good to be able to, to help people on that level. So this is a, a, a PowerPoint that I created for the training. Um, I learned, my first instance was from Cameron. He, he healed me in 2010 when I tore my meniscus with the Olympic team. We, we heard that story. Um, and when the choosing came around to, for the Olymp, uh, Lin, London Olympics, I knew that I was on the list, but I wasn't going to be chosen to go. A little bit of politics happened, so um, I had this opportunity to move down to San Diego and learn something brand new that was defying medical possibility uh, that medicine said was impossible and couldn't be done. And a long-haired Southern California volleyball player at the age of 21 was fixing things that medical professionals of 20, 30 years couldn't fix. And I'm, you know, I'm, it wasn't because I was smart, it was because this stuff was smart. And so went and learned about it, became really good at it, became the lead trainer in the nation within, in under a year and uh, started to teach cardiologists and neurosurgeons and chiropractors and veterinarians and pro athletes and the lay person and just anybody that wanted to listen, anybody that wanted to learn. And so this is our training uh, PowerPoint that we got. And so it's got at the Accuscope and the Myopulse, these are the, these are the first ones that came on the scene uh, back in 1978, went through its pre-market here in America in 1980, which means that they were put into um, circulation based on pre-existing machines. Um, and then you have the 2013 model, which is basically both of those under one hood. So you got a portable one and you got more of a clinical model. Um, so they're, they're both amazing. We started started using he started using those that's what i what he, what he fixed me on and then we uh found out about this guy in 2013 and started through it into the repertoire so uh everything is a cell in the human body from bone to ligament to skin to tendon to fascia to nerve uh, eyeball hair absolutely everything is a cell um again brain blood heart uh sperm cell ovum uh, everything is a cell and is, is all regulated by electrical signals from the brain and from the autonomic nervous system. Uh, and the best way to understand a cell is to think of a battery. Uh, we are literally a superconductor, as I believe Cameron was talking about earlier, and every single one of these little cells in our body is a battery, and it, they have the ability to hold on to electricity. Uh, two gentlemen in 1991, uh, have a, a Nobel Prize in Science and Medicine for uh, cell membrane potential, it's called. And they proved that we're made of electricity and that each cell indeed can hold on to and transfer electricity. 
And uh, if we are not getting enough sleep, if we're not fueling ourselves correctly, if we're stressed, uh, our bodies are available to be attacked and we get sick. And But if we're getting the sunlight and, and clean oxygen and lots of good sleep and exercise and we're happy, we don't get sick and we're healthy and our, our, our systems are strong. They're positively charged. Everyone's experienced that throughout their life. And so how do we get our electricity? All of those things we were just talking about, correct types of food, things that aren't grown with GMO. Uh, if you can grow your own stuff, that's the best. Farmer's market, awesome. But sunlight, clean water, again, exercise, sleep. Imagine being able to sleep like that. I, mean, I wish. And, and the thing is, some people do. Some people are able to, and you kind of go, well, how, how do you do that? Uh, and then the positive thinking, that's another massive one as to how we correctly energize our body and today we are bombarded by negative thinking and with politics with family with everything involved in today's american society so um, when you have no electricity you get breakdown uh, as we were talking about earlier uh, and there's a lot of contributing factors to that. Um, and just about every, I would say probably every person in here is guilty, except for maybe these young guys here sitting at this table who haven't had the time to develop the bad, the bad habits yet, but smoking, alcohol, eating, uh, not exercising. We sit at our desks all day long. Majority of America has a 14 hour a day, 12 hour a day, sit down je desk job, which we're not designed for. We're supposed to be up moving, going. Um, we, Substitute coffee, soda, and energy drinks uh, in lieu of water, which is supposed to be drinking water and, and enough water. There's a really good book out there. It's called You're Not, you're not Sick, You're Thirsty. And most of us don't have enough water content in our cells and in our body to be able to do what our systems are supposed to do in detox. And what you should be doing... That's that's just a joke. It's a bad joke. If you can do that, please come see me afterwards and help me out. Uh, so uh, our environment is also a huge culprit in this. Um, we've got stress from family, work, kids, bills. Um, we have electrical uh, noise happening around us all the time. We Most of us have a, a cell phone sitting in our pocket all day long. We put it right next to our bed at night, the blue light that shines from it, from it takes our brains out of the low delta, which is where our bodies are able to heal and regenerate. Uh, we got Wi-Fi in our houses. We got Wi-Fi in the cars. We got Bluetooth units that we constantly use. Uh, again, that's before cell phone use and then just 15 minutes after. And you can see how it is red, white, hot, right in the center of his ear. Um, after just 15 minutes of cell phone use, uh, the old big brick Nokia phones that they had in the 70s, the first ones, those had four times the legal amount of radiation pumping out of them, the Bell, Bell, the Bell phones. And uh, the FDA turned a blind eye because of the money that it was making and the technological advancement. And uh, so we know that we have harmful, harmful energy surrounding us all the time, which is even, even more of a, a reason to... to correctly energize um and again this is where you come in this is where, again our training uh so the acuscope and myopool systems deliver precise amounts of energy to the cell to stimulate proper function the acuscope myopools use a trillionth of an amp so other things like a, um, a tens device uh, an ultrasound a stem unit those things operate at about a thousandth Let's see if i can do this somewhere Right in here, right in these, this range, um, and, in, in this range, these, these guys right here. Uh, again, this stuff is in the trillionth of an amp. So uh, this is astronomically small in terms of cellular biology. If we think of a cell like a golf ball, all the little divots on the golf ball are these sodium potassium chloride pumps. They're called voltage-sensitive ion channels. And this goes back to that 1991 Nobel Prize. And our brain sends a signal that opens and closes those and allows the regulation of the positively charged ions on the outside of our cell and the negatively charged ions on the inside of our cell. And then when those regulate and all those open correctly, based on how much electricity we have in our system, all the good things with the cell happen. The ATP goes through the roof, the mitochondria goes through the roof, uh, and the cell is able to properly 
function. Um, so again, this is the same thing that your brain does. It's what's been going on since we were born. And you do not heal without, uh, without this process. If that stuff doesn't happen. So these are these, these pumps. So you have, you have the outside of the cell here. And this is the zoomed in of the outside of the cell. And so you've got 30 to 40 of these. These are the sodium potassium chloride pumps. And these are the ions that are moving in and out of the cell. And so the brain sends a signal and it zaps these and it gets them to start working. And that's how the cell regulates toxins and brings in new nutrients. But if we have heavy metals, uh, if we have scar tissue, if we have uh, toxicity, if we have um, virus, if we have poison, if we have anything that's in our system, that stops that from happening. And that signal from the brain gets blocked and it never gets to these and then the cell just holds on to toxins and then it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and then things like cancer happen. So this is what's going on inside your body. Um, so here again, we have another, so this is, imagine that cell cut in half and here are all of our voltage sensitive ion channels. And so each of these resonate at a certain frequency. And so just for example's sake, I have 1.0, 0.5, 60, 320, 8, 5. And if we look at our machine on here, this is our frequency knob that we have on here. So these are our hertz that we're able to adjust to. And these are the reading frequencies, not necessarily the treating frequencies. So it'll read your body at this and then it'll autocorrect because of the artificial intelligence that's inside of it. That's another reason why these are so powerful is that it eliminates almost all of the human error. Your body and this machine are having a conversation to figure out exactly what is wrong with your system so that it can fix it perfectly every single time. So, um, let me see, go here. There we go. So the ion channels are like a whole bunch of little locks, a little padlocks, all those divots of the golf ball on, on the outside, 30 to 40 of them. Um, and our frequency knob that we just saw is like a key ring. And so we go through our different frequency knobs and our different frequencies to check and use all of our keys on every single one of those locks. And eventually the cell opens up completely, fully, and then is able to achieve perfect cell membrane potential. Um, carefully designed, our protocols achieve patient satisfaction quickly and safely. After 40 years of this technology being around, there's not a single lawsuit with it. Uh, I and my brother have treated over the last 10 years combined hundreds of thousands of patients and of the other people involved in this uh, industry for the last that have been in it since the early 80s. Um, I have never once heard of an adverse effect. Never once heard of somebody being injured um, or, or having some untoward um, thing happen. Um, so it's perfectly safe for every person of every age. Um, and that's because it is capitalizing on how your body already naturally heals, which is with the electricity. Um, again, good for every part of the body, cutting artific artificial uh, intelligence, cutting edge artificial intelligence guides us to the correct spot every time through our biofeedback. So we don't miss, uh, where the actual injury is coming from. A lot of people have deferred pain. They'll have that sciatic pain in their knee and their ankle really hurts. And they go, oh man, I got to deal with my knee and my ankle and my back. Well, if we just deal with the back and deal with that correctly, the knee and the ankle are going to get better, get the swelling out of there and everything's going to take care of itself. Uh, again, powerful AI. Now, this isn't the AI that's going to create its own language and take over the planet. We don't have to be worried about that kind of stuff, but it does have limitations on it, and it's able to interface with your body um, 20,000 times a second, actually, to figure out exactly what's wrong. This machine has over 7 million markers in it, and so it's got the marker for the common cold and all the different variants of the common cold. It's got the marker for um, uh, IBS and IBD, and um, it's got the markers for basically anything else that you can think of that can affect the human body. Uh, again, that guy Rife in 1936 proved he could cure every disease known to man. 
And so this guy, the inventor of this, took all of Tesla's and all of Rife's frequencies and just threw them under one machine. And uh, so that's where we get all these 7 million markers from. Uh, and again, they're talking to one another to make a perfect outcome. So here are the two machines over here. Um, as the machine is turned on, it sends uh, a stimulation. It basically just taps the system and watches the response and then takes that information that it gets and autocorrects it and delivers it back to the system. And that's one cycle and this machine is doing 20,000 cycles a second. So it is interfacing with the human body at an insane rate so that every single one of our cells is properly uh, diagnosed and, and treated. Uh, and the human body has an average of 30, 36 to 40 trillion cells. Kind of depends on what website you go to. I haven't counted them all, so I'm not sure exactly. But some about 36 to 40 trillion cells. So this is reading and adjusting large portions of cells simultaneously and correctly adjusting them to have insane outcomes. And so that's the end of that guy. Um, but there is a, there's a reason that these things are around. There's a reason that, uh, we know that family members who have gone through things that like Brandon has gone through and many other people have gone through um, aren't raving about their experience in the current allopathic landscape. Um, there's a reason that everybody knows that there's an opioid crisis. It's a reason that um, most people who have spinal surgery don't have a new lease on life. They usually get a lot of issues, and after a certain amount of years, the next two vertebrae above and below where they had fused need to get fused again. Um, and that's because we haven't properly addressed how the human body actually heals. Uh, those things are fantastic on their own. Uh, they shouldn't be the first line. The first line should be what we put in our bodies and how we correctly fuel ourselves. And again, that's with electricity and energy. And so this is on a huge rise. More and more is coming out every day. It's not stopping. The ball is rolling. Um, and it integrates and it interfaces with current allopathic medicine beautifully. It's not an affront to it. It is the, the, the merging of it. Um, and it's the understanding of how the human body actually works. Um, so that's our presentation. That's a little bit about, about what's going on, about, uh, how science has led us here today and how the, the people who have forged, forged through in the past have, um, set us up for, for this. And we're, we're so incredibly happy and, and thankful that we get to do what we get to do. Um, again, I think Cameron said it earlier, we've got about 95 to 98% success rate basically across the board with just about anything that you can think of. Um, again, we don't treat, prevent, mitigate, or cure anything. Only thing we do is work on your pain, and anything else that happens besides that, outside of that, is uh, coincidental, I guess you could say. Um, but, Cam, if you wanna jump in and f finish off with any, any thoughts, and you could probably just take this guy if you want. I don't think that one was queued up. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Thank you, Cody. Um, so yeah, we uh, we started using these devices ten years ago. Um, helped us with our uh, professional sports uh, careers and uh, turned it into a business now, uh, helping others. And um, what we see is just absolutely incredible with um, people that have spent, you know, decades and hundreds of thousands of dollars going from hospital to hospital, doctor to doctor, um, you know, looking for what's going to solve their problems. And uh, whether it's, you know, migraine pain, gut digestion issues, joint pain, muscle pain, um, memory loss, uh, you know, heavy, heavy metal detoxification or heavy metal uh, toxicity, I should say. Um, these machines just they deliver uh, and over and over and over again. Um, it took, you know, 
two former professional athletes uh, and with no medical background and turned us into a couple of healers. And, um, you know, it's, uh, we love to introduce these to people because uh, it helps, you know, the average person, again, with, with no medical background and helps them heal themselves as well as uh, helps other people, you know, faci facilitate the healing in other people. So um, I wanted to just kind of share a couple of uh, anecdotal stories um, from my personal life. Um, so I had my, my disc issue and, you know, saved my baseball career, and that was great. Um, but my wife had a 1.7 centimeter mass, um, about the size of a nickel, in her right breast at 6 o'clock. And this was about three years ago. And she went in for a mammogram, um, and they found it. And that was on January 2nd. Uh, and then they told her to come back in about a month for a follow-up on February 7th. And when we got the news that she had a mass like that in her breast, um, you know, as, as her husband, I was you know, very scared. And it was horrible news. But uh, I said, honey, um, I've seen these machines do incredible things. And you're going to let me treat you. Uh, and so I... I, I treated her about every other day. So she had about 15 sessions in between January 2nd and February 7th. And uh, I have the uh, the imaging reports to prove all of this. But um, it was gone. Uh, she said that the doctors took the mammogram. Uh, and from what they found, and they didn't tell her this. But she didn't, they didn't tell her anything. They just pulled her into another room. And so she's thinking, oh, my gosh, they're going to tell me it's stage four. It's metastasized. Uh, this is bad. Um but they came in, and she she said, you know, the the doctors were visibly shaken. They didn't couldn't explain it, and they, but they said we we can't find the mass that was there, and we're going to take ultrasounds from multiple different angles just to be just to be sure. And sure enough, it was 100% gone. And um, you know, again, uh, it it wasn't biopsied. I don't know exactly what it was, but I do know that it was about this big. And um, and my wife has been a smoker for, uh, you know, for many years and, um, in 30 days, something that big in her breast was gone. And so, um, when I talk to people about these machines and tell them, you know, what they mean to me in my life and, uh, you know, the value of them, it's, it's, I can't put a number on it. It's, uh, it, it is, um, unmeasurable for me. And, um, and so, Glenn Croft, yeah, um, we sold a, a, a set to the largest senior living center in Arizona, a place called Glenn Croft. They have 900 um, residents and 500 staff members, and we were asked to come do a, a speech kind of like this, and we had some uh, a lady come up, and she uh, she had a bad knee, and um, in the 20 minutes that we were speaking, uh, we had somebody over here treating and, um, uh, her pain was gone in 20 minutes and everybody had seen her hobbling around campus for, you know, years. And, uh, so we were asked to come back and eventually they ended up buying a device because we did a six week beta testing with a whole bunch of their, their, um, uh, residents there. And one of the gentlemen, um, he hadn't walked in 27 months. He went from his bed to his, his scooter to back to his bed. And uh, he was told he would never walk again. He had something going on with his spinal cord, and he had a twin that had the exact same thing. And um, so we treated everybody four times that was in, in the program, in the beta test. And so we treated him uh, the first three times, and um, after the third time, he, he goes, hey, you know, I'm, I've been kind of kicking my legs in bed and I want to try something out. Would you guys just, you know, stand next to me and, and brace me in case I, I fall? And so Cody and I stood on either side of him and he lifted himself up out of his chair and took about two or three steps like this and then had to sit back down. And we helped him back down. Then after the fourth treatment, uh, he goes, I'm going to try it again. And so we, he's like, don't, you know... I, I don't want you to help me with this. I'm going to see how, you know, catch me if I fall, but uh, I'm going to see how much I can do. And uh, he got himself up out of his chair, took 10 paces, 
turned around on his own and took 10 paces back and sat down on his own. He now walks all over campus. Uh, he doesn't use his scooter anymore. And um, this man was told he would never walk again. So, um, you know, it's these. we see things that medicine can't explain. We see things that uh, doctors say are medical impossibilities. And part of the reason they say they're medical impossibilities is because of their scope. And um, they... You know, they practice through pharmacology and surgery, and these operate on a, on a different. You know, it's like coming in coming in the back door with the with the electricity and uh, electromagnetic frequency. Electromagnetic uh, force governs almost everything in our universe, uh, including our body's ab- ab- ability to heal. And so, um, you know, it, it's just makes all the sense in the world to let's try let's try what's not going to hurt you and has incredible uh success rates um across the you know across the entire spectrum um whether it's you know little babies or or you know the elderly or super high level athletes um having this these pieces of equipment that will never hurt you and uh, and will help your body heal no matter what level you're at is just, you know, <laughs> we're, we're still blown away that hardly anybody knows about this stuff. So we're, we're just really excited to be able to share it with you guys. Um, Cody, you got any other suggestions on stories? To, oh, we, got stories. we got lots of stories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anybody got have any questions? Um, is this safe for like we have like these Excellent question. Um so just so we have it on uh the film. The question was is this safe for people with pacemakers or metals in the body? Um and the answer is absolutely yes. Uh these devices because they work at such a small amperage uh, into the trillions of amps, we can work directly over a pacemaker and it won't make, uh, it, it doesn't do anything negative to it. Um, if we ever treat anybody uh, that has a pacemaker, we always get a note from their cardiologist um, before we do, but we have treated people with pacemakers before. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I 100%. The things are our bodies are incredibly connected. We're connected body, mind, spirit, you know, emotions. Um, and so, one of the things that we actually see is as we are releasing toxins, as we're getting the body to detoxify and uh, getting things to um, regulate, people will start to release. Uh, emotions as well that are tied to these toxins that have been trapped in in the body and so uh, we've had lots and lots of clients where um, you know they'll be we're treating their neck or their 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 knee or their gut issue and they'll start to cry and they'll apologize you know I'm so sorry I don't know why I'm crying and we encourage them you know this is you know this is good you're you're releasing old energies that you've been you know storing you know trapped in this, in this illness or in this, uh, you know, um, casing that the body has wanted to, you know, just trap it so it doesn't go everywhere else. And so as we are releasing that and, and releasing it in a, in a, in a safe and effective way, um, those emotions can, can come up and, and be released as well. So, Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Cody, you want to speak to that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, absolutely. This is, this is something that say like a chiropractor will see all the time, you know, they'll come in and they'll go, oh, hold on, you know, somebody will tell them the story and you know, talk about a past injury or whatever. And the chiropractor will go, hold on, let me, and they'll press right here. And like Cameron said, <laughs> the person just starts breaking down crying. Well, we know that we are detox machines, every cell detoxes, and that we know that we, we detox through our fascia in our muscles and the fascia that connects into the bones. And that's where our body stores a lot of these toxins. And so um, if we talk about the spiritual and we talk about emotion, we talk about things like love and hate. Well, these things don't actually exist in our three-dimensional realm, but you can't point to any one's thing and say that is tangible love, that is hate. They, they, they come through us from the spirit realm and we have to bring them into existence through our cells, through our three dimension. And they, that comes out in the form of a, a poem written or a kind word or, or an angry word or something. So these things that we're talking about, they don't, they're not tangible here. They come from the spirit and they come through our physical. And if we don't deal with them properly, they get locked in that fascia and in our body, and then they cause trauma. And then because your cells can't detox through those processes we were talking about because of the trauma that we literally lock ourselves off with, um, most people have come into contact with somebody who just is so negative all the time that they're either sick all the time, or when they are sick, they don't get better because they say, I can't get better or I can't do that. And everyone remembers Thomas the train. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. That's how we're supposed to think because your thoughts project your reality. And so if you're constantly saying, no, I, I can't get better. Every doctor I've ever seen has told me I can't get better, which we've seen so many times. People literally will stop themselves from their own healing by using this and this in conjunction. And so absolutely it's something that we uh, delve into and that we um, – consider and that there is a huge, huge market for and lots of research to to be had. Sure. A uh, lot. I mean, there's there's a lot. There's not, you know, when somebody has a, somebody bumped their knee into the table, that's pretty cut and dry. You know, okay, we see, we see that, of course. But life promotes so many interesting uh, circumstances that, you know, you get an injury and then you can't go to work. Well, and then your spouse goes, well, you can't go to work. Are you, and now we can't do this or now I can't. And so it, they become, they become synced and they become tied. So we actually do have lots of, again, anecdotal. Uh, I don't know how you can quantify, oh, you know, my, my hate or my love got, you know, what was, was causing my, my issue. I don't know how you can, you know, put that down on, on scientific white paper, but yes, we have, we have lots and lots and lots of people that we've come in contact with, uh, and have helped with, uh, with these issues. Um, one of the ways that it actually, um, has been proven is, uh, Dr. Emoto's work, um, with water. And uh, you guys can, I really encourage you to go to YouTube and type in Dr. Emoto. And uh, he was showing how human intention, human words and, and the intention behind the words, because um, it wasn't even so much the words, it's always the human intention, the, the emotion, the, you know, um, it, was, it was changing the actual structure of the water molecules in these glasses that he had. So he had one glass that says, I love you. And then another glass that says, I hate you. And another one that says, you know, uh, mother Teresa on it. And one that says Adolf Hitler on it. And, um, in, in the positive love, you know, mother Teresa, you know, you're incredible, but, um, or playing beautiful music, the structures of the water crystals were gorgeous, uh, and, and, and geometrically structured of, for strength. Um, and when it was hatred or Adolf Hitler or, you know, negative emotions, um, they were these discordant blobs and in some of them even looked like almost demonic faces in these, in these water structures. And so that right there proves that literally every thought that we have, every word that we speak to ourselves and to others are physically changing the structure of, of the water within our bodies.
we have helped several people um, kick on their thyroid again. Uh, we've helped people with their with their diabetes and and helping um, the pancreas start producing ins- insulin again. And um, type one, um, we've had more success with type two than one. Correct? Yeah. Um, but. We have a NFL player that we work with, and he has diabetes. Um, he's retired now, but um, he called me one morning after getting a couple of treatments. And... No, no, actually, he uh, he played with the the um, Arizona Cardinals and then the Philly uh, Eagles as well. Uh, but he called me. He goes, "Oh my gosh, bro! I, I my levels are usually like around 170." You know, uh, when I wake up and I haven't eaten anything and they're like right around 115, 120 right now. And, uh, and he's like, I haven't even taken my, my meds yet. And, um, so he, he comes back for, for regular, uh, tune ups and, and we've really helped him regulate his diabetes. Um, and then, uh, thyroid, um, we, we've got some protocols where we go right to the thyroid. We also hit the pituitary gland. Um, we go to the stomach and stimulate the stomach as well. And um, when you detoxify, you know, we have so many, so many hormones in our, you know, our meats and our foods and our, you know, all, all these toxins throughout our whole environment um, that are messing with our hormone regulators. And so when we're able to detoxify those hormone regulators uh, or hormone produ- uh, pr- production centers in our bodies, they'll start to kick on and, and, and do what they're supposed to do again. Yes. Um, so there's no real contraindications to medicines other than uh, rapid detox and um, more of a Herxheimer reaction um, where if somebody is very toxic and has been taking medications for a long time or maybe has a lot of infection going on, um, the detoxification process can be a little bit rough, but we have things like binders and, and Brandon, Brandon touched on that a little bit, um, to help with that process, um, to, you know, bind to the heavy metals that it's extracting or, uh, Berber Panella or Amantia, um, um, Montremillanite clay, uh, is a good binder, but there's, there's several things that we can help you with, you know, that detox process. So it's not so bad. But um, as far as as these frequencies, you know, being negative with uh, with the body or with uh, you know whatever you're taking, um, no, there's there's no contraindications, which is why you know they've been around for 40 years and there hasn't been any any uh, lawsuits or or anything like that. And that being said, I wanted to touch on this. Even though these are you know these, these technologies have been around for 40 years. The, as computers have gotten faster and faster, more efficient, um, these computers have gotten faster and faster and more efficient. So these brand new 2020, 22 models um, are even better than you know the, the 2013 model and and worlds better than the 1980s models. And uh, so, those are incredible. Yeah, you've, yeah. You've we yeah we uh, we still have we still help people with uh, some of the old devices and um yeah they're amazing as well and it's also but, why um it's also kind of an and, it, and it's a it's a problem which most people kind of understand that um when something sounds too good to be true it usually is unless someone's been hiding it from you for that exact purpose and the reason that people have not heard about these devices and about this type of technology in general is because it breaks the standard American business model of cut and drug. And people don't stay sick. And people get better so fast, and they go back to their life, and they stand up out of their wheelchair for the first time in 15 years, and their family goes, oh my, what what did you do? How How is this possible? And they say, I don't know, these guys shocked me with some stuff. And they tell everybody, which is how everybody is here, um, this isn't even a, a 15th of the, the people that have been touched by, by Brandon having one of these uh, sets of machines here in, in uh, Simbo Springs for only 
a month and a half, two months. Um, it grows like wildfire and it's all through word of mouth and that's because it works. But we also, people go, how come, if this is so great, how come I haven't heard about this? Well, these are class two registered FDA devices, but they have been kept from the general public. They were given to the elites, uh, Michael Jordan, has one, uh, Terry Bradshaw, Joe, uh, Joe Montana, Jack Nicholas, um, uh, the motivational speaker, um, Tony Robbins has a couple of these, um, uh, Vicente Fox, I gave him his actual machine. That's the former president of Mexico. Um, and a lot of these elites had this, this technology available to them, but it was hush hush. Um, it didn't want to be put out there because it, again, it would affect, it would affect the business model. And so we found it. That's how we were able to get it. And uh, we said, enough of that. Every, every human being deserves health and wellness. And it's time that everybody knows about this. And another uh, uh, term that we've coined, a saying of ours is feeling is believing. And we can talk for three weeks till we're blue in the face about all of the things and you can watch all of our testimonials and listen to all the pro athletes and doctors and blah, 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 blah. But until it positively impacts your life, it kind of means a hill of beans. And so we love getting to treat people. We love getting to show people in real time, you know, when my knee couldn't bend in 15 minutes, 30 minutes later, now I can walk and I can go up and down stairs. And so it's another kind of adding in factor to why we're here, but also why this is kind of new information, uh, 40 year old new information. So, um, anything else? Anybody else have a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just curious. I have a daughter at 25, had a hysterectomy, had ovarian cancer, and mm -hmm. now at two different sessions of, uh, not sessions, a series of chemo and radiation. Mm -hmm. Chemo left her with seizures, like grand mal seizures, I think she put on a catheter on three different medications at one time or something right. like that. Is it, can you do something like this with seizures? Is that something, I mean, I think seizures are just kind of like a little something going on with this. Is this um, yeah, so th this is, you know, it's a big computer up in here. It is a trillion and trillions and trillions of, um, electrical signals and stimuli and synapse that are constantly firing and sending, you know, information for the rest of the system. And this ties into post-traumatic stress disorder as well. And the loop that happens in the brain and in these synapses um, that can either be uh, beneficial or harmful. Um, and again, because this, this technology and this electricity is your body's own electricity. It's just watching the processes of what happens and then auto correcting them. And so, uh, yes, absolutely. We've, we've helped a lot of people with their seizures to, to get rid of their seizures, to, um, make them more manageable. Um, uh, and, or, or like I said, to completely eliminate them. Uh, same thing with the PTSD. Uh, I used to work down in San Diego where I learned how to do this. And we were 25 miles south of Camp Pendleton and 25 miles north of Coronado. So we had the, the Marines and then we had the, the Navy SEALs. And so we saw a lot of guys and, and ladies with PTSD. And take a guy who's overseas and you know he's he's in Iraq or Afghanistan or something gets in a gunfight and he comes back here to the states and a, and a car goes driving by and it backfires and he hits the deck and he goes right back into that fight or flight autonomic nervous system sympathetic nervous system freak out um and he can't differentiate between the car backfiring and and the person on his left who's his you know his loved one you know of 40 years and, and and an enemy that he thinks he has to kill well that's an electrical stimuli um that starts an electrical loop in the brain and while he's over there because he has to stay alive these synapses form in in the loop of of the thought process in the brain and they grab on and so when that car backfires it it triggers that electrical stimuli well as this machine is on it actually watches that process through the vagus nerve through the sympathetic nervous system which kickstarts that and so as this is on it sees that and it sees the vagus nerve and the nervous system start to freak out and it stops it and then as that memory loop comes to jump through that synapse to create this effect 
this machine blocks it and stops it. And it happens again and it blocks it and it stops it. It happens again and it blocks it and it stops it. And it does this over and over and over and over again until the brain goes, we're not getting a memory. Nothing is, nothing is happening. So what the synapses do is they let go and they grab onto brand new fresh synapses and that memory loop is forever extinguished and no more PTSD. And so, yes, it works, it works similarly for the, for the seizures. Yeah. Um, uh, we don't deal in terms of cancer ever. We deal in terms of pain, but I can explain the process of how a cancer cell should die. Um, cells naturally go through a process known as ap apoptosis. It's the death of the cell. It's when the cell understands that it is so unhealthy that it needs to kill itself. Well, doctors often refer to a cancer cell as a zombie cell. Uh, it's not dead and it's not alive. It's kind of in this suspended state of animation and it's uh, just a balloon of toxin that sits there that doesn't know how to die and it infects every other cell that's around it. And they then turn into this balloon of toxin and you get a tumor and you get this big mass that grows. Well, uh, when these cells are able to receive the correct amount of electricity, the electricity repairs the dielectric. And so the dielectric, if you think of an orange and you have the or uh, the, the rind of the orange, the skin of the orange, that is that golf ball divot that we were talking about. And that has all those little pumps on it. And, and those are, those are blocked and those are shut down. They're so full of toxins and the cell doesn't have enough electricity that it can't regulate those. Well, if we're able to give that cell membrane enough electricity, those functions start to regulate themselves and they start to rebuild that orange rind, that dielectric. And as we keep putting the correct amount of electricity into the system, to remind it of how to heal, it does exactly that. The cells become almost conscious again and go, oh no, we are so sick, we need to die. And they start killing themselves and they start going through apoptosis. And you are not in risk of this traveling throughout your body and causing cancer in another place, kind of like a biopsy, uh, because the cell itself implodes and it puts all of the fluids and the toxins that are inside that cell into the vascularity and the lymphatic in correct channels so that you can sweat, pee, and poop it out naturally. So this is what happens when you give a cell the correct amount of electricity. And so... This is what we sometimes see happen if you get the cell positively charged enough. Again, it all goes back to the 1991 Nobel Prize for Science and Medicine. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's right. Yep, uh, the, the body knows, the body knows what to do. If we, again, if we give it the correct amount of information, uh, its processes are so intelligent and they know where to put the, the fluids and they know where to, where to not put them. And again, they don't break off and they don't have a, a chance to, to stay in an intact balloon of, of toxin and sit somewhere and then start infecting everything else. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's perfectly safe again for all ages. Um, Again, the pacemaker, this works, this works at a trillionth of an amp, which is what we have running in us right now. Um, so if your body can naturally short out the pacemaker, which I don't know of cases of that, um, then I guess there is a chance, but this is using the same amount that your body has in it. And again, we've never seen any issues with pacemakers with muscle stimulators, uh, with spinal stimulators, anything like that. It just simply doesn't generate enough electricity to interfere with it. Anybody else? Okie dokie. Awesome. Well, um, thank you guys so much for coming and for being here. Uh, Brandon, do you have anything else you want to, you want to touch on? You want to say, No, uh, if, if you want to. I want to touch real sure. quick on the impact that had since we sure. didn't really. Yeah, I took my microphones off, didn't I? Um, 
Uh, so guys, uh, the only thing we didn't really touch that much on uh, was the diagnostic stuff. And after thinking about what Fagley and I hit on, um, it was just one thing that kind of was overlooked because that really was a turning point. Uh, the QI5, which is uh, advertised out there with the brochures, the same microcurrent technology but used diagnostically, uh, much like the Zytoscan. Um, and the, the power that that has, if you think about it this way, um, an insomniac goes in to see a doctor. Okay, of course, there's Lunesta, Ambien, Ambien CR, you know, you can take muscle relaxers, painkillers, whatever ails you to get you to go to sleep. Okay, if you could actually line up 12 different things, okay, run the current through that particular item, okay, and it would be able to tell you whether or not your body responded by amping up its frequency or calming its frequency, okay? Imagine an insomnia walks, walks in and hasn't, hasn't slept well in a year. Okay? You could literally run through the medications and hand that person the one that their body would respond best to instead of getting on one, trying it for 30 days, having it fail, getting the side effects of the medication, trying another combination of sleeping aids, okay? and getting all the bad side effects of all of those harmful medications instead of just saying, hey, you know what? It's bad enough that I have to take a medication. Okay, this thing will literally tell me whether or not my body is going to respond poorly or well to it. Okay, and from a diagnostic standpoint with the metals, okay, it's not going to tell you exact amounts if it detects metals in your system. If you have gadolinium in your system, gadolinium is going to set off a frequency. It's going to detect that frequency. Then you can take that information, go to a doctor like Dr. Fegley, do a 24-hour urinalysis after an EDTA push to get your exact levels, okay? But the Zytoscan can alert you of which direction to go. Do I test for mold? Do I test for metals? Do I test for parasites? Okay, is it viral? Like, what are we looking at? Um, so yes, that is something that we will have at the clinic, you know, available to everybody for as a diagnostic tool, not just as treatment. Okay. And guys, I would like to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I know we didn't have a giant turnout, but I think the right people came. Please spread the word, okay? We all know people that are dealing with issues that think they might have the answer, and you're sitting there watching and going, I'm pretty sure they don't have the answer, and I sure do love this person. Okay, send them our way. Please, I'm not saying I'm going to replace the medical industry. I want to work side by side with docs like Dr. Fegley. Okay? I want Sosi to send me clients that, that really need to get back from a surgery in a hurry. Okay? I don't want to tell you what to have surgery on. I want to help you get better. Um, so I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for everything, and that's about it.